Uh, good evening, good evening. Is it going to be a good evening? Who knows, but um, with this banter club, it looks like um, there's no sign of an end and we are going up against Southampton in what is going to be another match preview and predicted lineup we do on this channel, so let's get straight into it. Southampton are doing very well this season, um, no complaints for them. You know, Ralph Harsin who taught, you know, ever since, you know, he lost 9-0 and uh, there was a huge pressure on him and Southampton, you know, to improve. You know, Harsin who has kept with his playing style, he's kept with the players he has, he's worked on a limited budget and he's got Southampton actually quite a lot of success and we are going to be going into the match facts as well but you know we are going to be focusing a tiny bit on Southampton because they deserve a lot of respect you know they are fourth right now in the Premier League 23 points of 12 games whereas us lot we're 10 points behind 10 points behind Southampton that's not a good place to be so early on in the season and uh, we have to win you know we have to get wins now um, because Mikel Arteta's job is under quite a lot of scrutiny um, um, actually Edu did actually speak about Mikel Arteta and uh, we're not going to go into too much um, into that because I just don't think there's any point of doing so um, but Fabrizio Romano did actually say something about this so we're just going to read um, what he's had to say um, he said Arteta is doing a great job we are in a process to have a beautiful future with Mikel if you and sign 20 players which we're not going to do that's not going to work anyway why people expect a magician to go boom come here Messi that's not going to happen well I have a lot of problems with that because you know before you said um, you know Willian he talked about Willian as well and said you know now he's saying he's not going to have an impact straight away but well whereas before he said he's going to have an impact straight away I mean, it doesn't make sense half the things this club says and uh, it just puts less and less trust and all these situations will happen with the posts on social media with um, Gwenduzi and Saliba. If you don't know what's going on in that one, it's essentially... Um apparently them saying they're locked up or something um, and I don't blame Saliba and something's gone on there and it's just not working out Ainsley Maitland-Niles what's going on with him Urzo, Aubameyang, Lacazette, Pepe it's just such a mess at the moment at this football club and we need confidence and we need it now because if we lose to Southampton Edu will be put under a lot of pressure to make a decision and it looks like yesterday he spoke and he said you know we're going to stick with them but how long more can you carry on with this how long more it's going to be a very interesting situation that develops over the next few weeks whereas we do give him the january transfer window because you know I do possibly hint out the fact we don't spend in the January window. If we don't spend, then it's just going to be these same lot of players that we're going to have to go with. And what, what you can't expect change if you're not going to change the players. You know what I mean? And um, you can't you can't do that. And it's going to be very difficult, very very difficult. And um, it's a very dire situation at the moment. But uh, let's move away from that. Let's go uh, on to the match of facts for this game. Um, again. I don't know. Uh, let's go on to it. Arsenal are unbeaten in their last 25 home league games against Southampton, winning 18, drawing 7 since a 1 0 loss in November 1987 was the last time we lost at uh, home to Southampton. Well, that record could be going on Wednesday. Southampton drew this exact fixture with Arsenal 2 2 last season, conceding a 90th minute equaliser courtesy of Alex Lacazette. If you do remember, that was Unai Emery's last league game as well. They've not avoided defeat in consecutive away league games against Arsenal since September 19. 1988. Arsenal are unbeaten in all 21 of their Premier League home games against Southampton, winning 15 during 6, the most home games the team has played without against another in the competition without ever losing. Arsenal have lost just one of their 21 Wednesday Premier League games at the Emirates Stadium, winning 14 during 6, going down 1-2. Um, against Swansea in March 2016. Southampton are winless in their last 21 Premier League away games played on a Wednesday, which is a surprising fact. Um, drawing 7, losing 14 since um, winning 2-0 at Chelsea in April 1995. There goes another record. Um, excluding own goals, 10 of the last uh, 16 Premier League goals scored in fixtures between Arsenal and Southampton have been scored by English players. Prior to this, only in 10 of the previous 55 goals were scored by Englishmen. Arsenal have received 6 Premier League red cards since Mikel Arteta's first game in charge in December 2019, double that of any other side in this time. Southampton have won 23 points in their opening 12 Premier League games this season, winning 7, drawing 2, losing 3. Assuming 3 points for a win in all seasons only in 2014-15, uh, uh, where they had 26 points, where they had the most points after 12 matches in a top flight season. Danny Ings has scored 3 Premier League goals in 3 appearances against Arsenal for Southampton. No Saints players ever scored 4 goals against the Gunners in the competition. With the 96 chance he had created in the Premier League, Southampton's Oriol Romeo registered his first assist against Sheffield United in their last match in his 
23 23rd appearance among outfield players at least one assist only Stefan Henchong Henchos 234th match had a longer wait for his first assist in the Premier League so yeah that is the match facts for this game and it promises to be a very interesting game in which Arsenal do have to win you know there's just no denying it now we do have to win Premier League games and you just have to you know uh, Southampton doing very well this season Ralph Arsenal too, will be rubbing his hands together I'm looking forward to this one but uh, it's it's we have to win you know we have to stop putting we, we have to put points on the board because you know Mikel Arteta to fans that are still out there that are still with him I'm not with him um, but again fans that are with him you know they need to you know, they need to realise now the situation is getting desperate. So we are going to get straight into our predicted lineup. First of all, starting off in goal, Bernd Leno. Um, why did I say that so weirdly? But Bernd Leno is going to start off in goal. Um, we will have to make a few changes from the game against um, uh, Burnley. But again, I don't think he'll make too many changes because he likes sticking with the players he's got. Um, but again, I will go with uh, Bernd Leno in goal as always. Moving into a back four, I'll go with a 4 3 3 because I think that's just a standard formation. Arteta plays like 12 formations in a game anyway, so yeah. Um, we're going to go with on the right back Cedric Suarez against his former club I think it's important to play him um, positionally he's very good he'll know all the Southampton players he'll know the style of play he's played with Ralph Hasenuto and I think he'll be very um, good to have in the side against them moving into the back two first of all Pablo Marie I think it's an important game to bring him back into the side now um, you know I think he's a player that can offer us a lot in terms of experience especially next to the one I'm going to go next to him which is Gabriel uh, Gabriel I do expect him to continue he has played um, three games in a week you know he did it for Leo last season he's done it for us this season early when we were playing the Europa League and I've got no problems in putting him there left back Kieran Taney um, I don't want to see Kalazanac near this side so I think Kieran Taney will have to continue in this side and I've got no problems with that whatsoever but hopefully this back line is enough to keep Southampton out but who knows you know it's not always that they have a lot of chances in games teams it's just when they do get their chances they put it away and we don't moving into the three in midfield first of all Danny Ceballos um, I'm going to bring him back into the side he didn't play against Burnley when I think he should have you know he did come on he didn't offer us loads did he um, but again I think Danny Ceballos has to continue in the you know he has to start he has to start games see what he can offer us and uh, you'll be that box to box player in the holding midfield role sort of sitting a bit deeper I'll go Mohamed El Nini um, I think he's very good in that role just sit backs you know cleans up does all the dirty work he's normally much better with someone like Thomas Partey next to him but with Granit Xhaka suspended I think he could do a very good job holding um, that midfield Next to him, like a sort of a number 10 sort of role, I will go with Emil Smith Rowe. Um, Emil Smith Rowe, I really want to see him in the side now. Um, you know, he d- he was on the bench, but he didn't come on against Burnley. I should I should he should have come on because we needed creativity. He could have brought a start, but he didn't come on, which is very unfortunate for us. Um, I think Emil Smith Rowe needs to start Premier League games now and no better chance. You know, if it's not working with our usual players, why not change it up? Why not, you know, you know, make it a bit variant? But again, we'll have to see. But I'll go with Emil Smith Rowe in a three alongside Oneni and Sabah. Us. Moving into our front three, first of all, on the right hand side, Nicholas Pepe. We are bringing Pepe back into the side straight away. Um, I don't want to see Willian near this team, especially when uh, Pepe has now completed his three game suspension after that Leeds game, which was um, Wolves, Spurs, and then the Burnley game. So he is back now, and I really want to see him in the side now. Um, no Europa League game for him to play, no excuse. Put him in the side. Willian's not been good enough at all. He wasn't that bad against Burnley, but again, he just doesn't offer us in terms of direction, you know, going forward, taking on players. I think Pepe does not much better than anyone else so why not on the left hand side I will go with Gabriel Martinelli I want to see him now in the side Gabriel Martinelli he is definitely back and he's fit um, he's been training with the first team he's been back for a few weeks now he did play 45 minutes for the other 21s but now we need energy in the side and you know when teams will be tiring out a bit in this uh, Christmas break or sort of, you know winter period you know someone like Martinelli would be perfect to go at defenders and against the Southampton side that you know do like to play expansive football I think Martinelli on the break would be so ruthless for us and I think uh, you know we have to be playing someone like Martinelli up front as the main striker Pierre-Emerick O. Bamiang. Um oh look, I contemplated dropping him, but he's a striker that needs to get back on form. Um I said this on a few shows with some people that he needs to be dropped, but again, he's a player that I think it's gonna help him if he just plays the games and you know he 
gets a goal because once he gets one or two goals he'll be firing again his confidence will be back and uh, you know Bamiang is a player so big for us you know he's going to be the player that leads us back into a, a positive direction you know we need him scoring and we need him scoring quickly so hopefully hopefully Bamiang you know starts again scores again keeps scoring you know we need him scoring because it just shows last season how much he carried us because his goals were so important for us 29 goals in all competitions last season that was so big for us especially in our FA Cup run two goals in the semi finals two goals in the final one in the community shield and one on the opening day against fulham so those few games you're so so good for us and we just need to rediscover that form that is my predicted lineup for this game against southampton as i said it's going to be very tricky very very tricky southampton have had a very good start this season their confidence is sky high going into this our confidence very low at the moment on and off the pitch things are not looking good at all um, we are going to have a quick look um, at Mikel Arteta's press conference. On, uh, He said that it's no time to hide. It's time to put your face and your body on the line. We have to take the bullets. You have to put your chest out and say, hit me. You have the right to hit me because I'm not winning. On some players in the squad not being happy, he said, when you have uh, when you have the squad we have for diff different circumstances, it is impossible to have 31 happy players. Obviously, when you lose, th these things are going to come out and try to put pressure or be disruptive. I am not interested. So that's the sort of important parts of his press conference. And what are your thoughts on that obviously edu did come out and say i did give a few quotes from his um little interview he did with arsenal.com um thank you guys so much for watching if you have enjoyed please like and subscribe who do you think will win this game against southampton i'm not too sure i think we'll probably lose again and all those records that are being held will probably be broken in this game because that's what we seem to be doing over the last few weeks leave your predictions and thoughts in the comment section down below do you agree or disagree with my starting 11 see you guys in the next one Bye bye